Well, hi, everyone, and thanks, Ephraim. Um, yeah, so today we're going to talk about um, placing youth in summer jobs in Boston. And we are the last thing between you and coffee, but I think you'll enjoy this story. So to reiterate what Ephraim just, just told us, um, summer jobs are disappearing across this country, and they've been steadily declining for young people over the past few decades. Um, they're declining on the whole, but they're also declining uh, disproportionately for black and Latino youth. We also know that summer jobs uh, are associated with incredibly positive long-term outcomes. We've seen that with a summer job comes a decrease in criminal behavior and offenses, as well as an increase in GPA, attendance rates, and high school grades. A summer job is all, all, often uh, the first introduction to the workforce ever. It's usually someone's first job. And with that comes really high stakes. And Mayor Marty Walsh recognized this, and he reached out to the Chamber of Commerce uh, with a challenge to open up 10,000 positions for young people in the summer. But with that came another challenge. If, if these jobs were created, how, how was the city actually going to process all of those applications? Luckily, we have incredible national partners um, who provided support from Living Cities, Code for America, and National Neighborhood Indicators Partnership, who invited us to actually use the tools that we know well, civic data and technology, to solve this. So we gathered our local leaders um, and folks who are, are working directly on these issues. So Metropolitan Area Planning Council is where I work. We collaborated with the Division of Youth Engagement and Employment in Boston, the Department of Innovation and Technology, volunteers from Code for Boston, and lastly, researchers from MIT's Department of Economics. And I want to dive into DYEE and, and the team that does this work. They're an incredibly uh, talented and passionate group of public servants who are doing really good and important work to place young people in their first job. And they're hit with a lot of applications. They get 8,000 a year, but they're only able to actually place 3,000. The process that get, they go through is, is lengthy, it's cumbersome, and it actually takes 14 minutes per placement to to find a job for a young person. They're spending their time making calls, leaving voicemails, and not spending the time on things that could actually benefit the program, like finding more employers to offer positions, or actually engaging with the youth face-to-face -face who are in the program. And once they actually reach those youth, they're choosing from a list. They're making an educated guess to someone they've never met about what kind of job might be good for them. So we decided to do what we do best. We're technologists. Let's call in the machines. This is the perfect problem. It's an efficiency issue. We have structured data from applications. But we knew that if we were going to do it well, we would have to do it with the users of the system itself. And so we invited young people to come into the process and actually design a better, faster placement algorithm for the youth by the youth themselves. Thanks, Alicia. So the question, can this be solved with civic technology? Well, we started this process by redesigning the application for young people. We wanted to make it simpler, easier to use, and we wanted to collect more information about the things that were important to them, their priorities in summer employment. And then we worked with young people to design an algorithm that could automate some of the assignment process. And we took into account the things that the young people we talked to had voiced as barriers for them or challenges when they went through this themselves. Issues of travel time, issues of access to transit relative to jobs, not to mention their own individual preferences and skills. Uh, one of the issues that was surfaced to us by young people is the lack of equitable distribution of jobs in different neighborhoods. And so the algorithm factored that into thinking about how to make assignments in a way that wouldn't mean that where you live determined whether or not you had access to a job. 
And so we ran this against the pool of applicants that we had uh, for last summer. And the algorithm made uh, recommended assignments. And all of those young people got an email message offering them a job uh, that was suggested as a result of this, uh, this algorithm. And what we found last summer is that 20% of young people accepted a job offer entirely through this automated email-based process. And that saved almost nine weeks of staff time that would have otherwise been spent making phone calls and trying to get in touch with young people. But it also meant that when staff did actually have to uh, pick up the phone, that they had better tools to make sure that the young people got a meaningful job opportunity that was a good fit for them. It wasn't pulling a random item off a list. Instead, it was looking at, it was thinking about the preferences of that person. And it helped make sure that somebody who hoped to spend her summer uh, working in a technology environment didn't get assigned to a recreation center or vice versa. But we also learned some things along the way. Uh, you know, Ben Heck said earlier, uh, talked about meeting people where they are. Well, one of the things we learned is that young people in Boston are not on email all the time uh, over the summer. It's something that's typically associated with school. And so we, we learned that that isn't always the best way to reach a lot of the people that we were trying to connect with. So in our next iteration, we hope to use text message or other mo modes of communication to really get to people and make sure that they have uh, the information and the opportunity that they need where they are. Uh, we're also working with uh, the MIT Economics Department to do more research uh, about both the, how well the algorithm worked, you know, did it lead to higher job satisfaction, uh, did it improve the employment experience, especially along the dimensions that the young people highlighted as uh, particular challenges for them. But we also want to connect this back to the long-term outcomes. Uh, you know, does, does a better assignment mechanism produce better long-term outcomes, whether you're looking at educational attainment, criminal justice system involvement, or long-term economic success? But I want to go back to this efficiency question. You know, we talked about saving nine weeks of time, which is great, but the reason we do that is not simply to save money or to save dollars. This is about allowing the staff, you know, Deron Jackson and his team at DYEE to spend their time doing the things that matter. As Alicia said, they can be out there recruiting new employers. They can be out there talking to young people who maybe aren't sure if a summer job is right for them and coaching them to help them get comfortable with the idea. Government efficiency isn't about a better bottom line. It's about better outcomes for people. And that brings us to the big thing that we learned in this project that if we can let the machines do what they do well, then people can do the things that only they can do. Ultimately, our goal is simple. We want a city where every young person has the opportunity for a great first job. And what we learned in Boston is that to do that, we will have to combine algorithms, civic technology, and the continued hard work of a whole lot of great, dedicated people. Thank you very much.